Warning, the outcome of this video will result in you drawing closest to Allah and improving your religion. Viewer discretion is advised. If Allah has decided for your hair follicles to give up and for you to lose your hair, for your hairline to recede and for you to have thinning hair, if Allah has decided it, why are you unhappy? You take off your hijab, you feel like chunks of it, you're in the shower, you feel chunks of it, you're brushing hair, you feel chunks of it. I get it. I, I would want hair as much as anyone else, but I've submitted and surrendered to the decree of Allah. If Allah's decree has stated that SQ, I want you to have no hair, then that's what it is. But guess what? In Jannah, I'm gonna have a full head of hair, inshallah. If you don't love yourself exactly the way you are, you're always gonna feel insecure, you're gonna feel less, and you're always gonna be chasing how to make it better. And no matter how beautiful you make your face through surgeries, through lip fillers, through hair extensions, hair implants, you're never gonna feel incomplete. Why? Because you haven't appreciated the face that Allah has already given you. Way of Life SQ, keeping it a hundred. Come back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> you have to say Assalamu Alaikum. Say Assalamu Alaikum. Welcome back. No, say Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. Good job. Say, tell them, may Allah bless you. May Allah bless you. Okay, mashallah. Uh, and say, uh, thank you for watching my video. Thank you for watching my video. Okay, now say, now don't put it too close to your mouth. Now say, uh, that was the intro. That's the intro. Dealing with balding and overall hair thinning and hair loss insecurity. I think it's no no surprise or something that I'm bald. I'm actually proud and happy of being bald, but the truth is I wasn't always like this. I actually used to be super insecure about uh, losing my hair, being bald, and uh, overall not having it because once upon a time my hair was my pride and joy. You know what I mean? Like it, it was there, it was on my head, it was full, it was nice. Um, but I always felt insecure about it because I always felt like it was a thinning hair, it was thinning hair, the receding was happening and I could feel like it was like light, light over here but I was losing hair from a very young age and it really hurt me. But before we continue to talk about that, just some quick announcements. Feel free to skip through them and follow the time stamps with the real ones. I appreciate you who are watching. Uh, first announcement is that the uh, Oiger Social experiment is going to take place tomorrow. Tomorrow, Saturday, we're going to be filming the video Saturday. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're not going to get a daily video on Saturday. You're still going to get your daily video, but the video is going to be shot on Saturday, and your Sunday's daily video is going to be the social experiment for the Uyghurs. Uh, and the next announcement is uh, that I don't have any more announcements. Let's get jump into this video. So, I think that growing up seeing like Shah Rukh Khan and you know all these Bollywood stars having hair it made me realize that one big aspect of beauty for at least a man is having hair my dad had a lot of hair on his head and it was his pride and joy as well too and I, and I realized that having hair was something that was really really important um, you know I lived in Pakistan for about three years I'd say and hair was such a big deal like people take their hair seriously I, I don't know, maybe if you're from Pakistan or from India or Bangladesh, I don't know if it's maybe a Desi thing only. I think this it's a pretty much like universal thing, but I think people take their hair very, very seriously. And I remember even as like like as a kid, I would have hair, but it was like thin. It, it was just thin hair. Like it wouldn't look like that until you like really, really looked at it with like a microscope, a uh, magnifying glass or a microscope, you know what I mean? Like, but it was thin and I could always tell that. And people would always just say things like, oh, you know, ganja or that. You know, they would say things like that, oh, you're going bald, and it'd get in my head. And I feel like part of the reason that I think I lost my hair even quicker was because of the stress of going bald. So it's just like, like once you find out you're going bald, there's a stress factor to going bald that you have that's inside of you even more. Maybe you guys vibe with it, maybe you don't, right? Uh, I understand that not everyone's going to want to watch this video, not everyone's going to care about this video, but this video is for those of us who are struggling with hair loss or are about to go through that. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because a hijama, or a hijama client came to me yesterday and he was suffering with alopecia, right? And that's a real, like, uh, sickness or, 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 yeah, a sickness that you can have that causes hair loss. Women have it, men can have it. And he was losing hair, like, he only had, like, patches of hair left. And I'm telling my guy, bro, like, shave it off. Shave off the hair. Like, you look sick. You look like you're going through chemotherapy, bro. Like, may Allah bless him. But, like, you look like you look sick, man. Shave off the hair. 
and um, he just couldn't get it. He would rather have little patches of random hair. I'm serious, little patches of random hair than actually hit Rock a Baldy, right? And I realized that, hey, there's something deeper to this, right? Because he's not the first person I've given advice to about this, but shaving your hair is a big step. So I want to talk to you about how I shave my head a little bit, uh, and maybe it can inspire you guys to take that next step or for you to feel confident with this. First and foremost, I'd like to say that Shaving my head was the biggest blessing that could happen to me. Losing my hair was the biggest blessing actually that could happen to me. One of them. That's cute. What about your children? Nope. What about getting married? That's cute. Nope. What about having a beautiful family? Nope. It was shaving my hair. All right. <laughs> Clearly, that was sarcasm. Because it forced me to actually develop my personality and develop who I am as a person instead of relying on superficial things like hair to get by with life. You know, a lot of times people have confidence because they have certain things, right? So they either have a really good body or a six pack or muscles or, or a nice car or, or something going on in them, maybe a nice job or nice hair. Okay, nice hairstyle or nice hairline, you know, or nice haircut. And that's what gives them the confidence. Does that make sense? Like that's what gives them the confidence. Losing my hair challenged me to not find confidence in uh, things that can go away. Not find confidence in having nice things or looking good or whatever. It allowed me to find true confidence within me. And I feel like a lot of people are lacking true confidence. And and the and and the brother was saying who I was talking about the the the, the shaving from the hijama. It's like, yo, when I get older, I'm going to get like, when I have a lot of money, I'm going to get the hair surgeries and all that sort of stuff. And I'm just like telling him, and this is what I spoke about on Dawa Man's podcast as well too. So inshallah, Dawa Man, release it on Tuesday as you said you would. Okay. Um, inshallah. And uh, the main thing was I said, okay, bro, that's going to happen when? In three, four years from now? So you're telling me from three to four years, you're straight up just going to be insecure about your hair, wearing a do-rag and then wearing a hat so no one sees it. It's just like, like that's how he changes hair. I'm just like, come on, bro, you're going to do that the whole time? And I know people don't make it any easier, you know? People used to come up to me and say, oh, good job. And I'm like, man, I know. Get the hell away from me. I know I'm going bald, bro. I don't need you. I have a mirror. You know what I mean? And that frustrates us even more. So if, if you know someone who's going bald or they're losing their hair or, you know, they're dealing with some insecurity, just know that, yo, they know. There's no point of you saying that. But I am, I'm in the, of, of the opinion that people like saying that so they can make themselves feel better. You get what I mean? Like they say that so they can make themselves feel better about themselves, that their life isn't good or whatever. Like their areas are, they're lacking abundance in certain areas, but uh, because you don't have hair and they do, oh, they feel better about themselves. So to each his own, I guess. You know what I mean? So anyways, um, I feel like I was losing it throughout my life and I could see like even my Caesar, I could show you this Caesar right here. Um, I, you know, it feels I had hair, you know what I mean? Like I had hair, but in my opinion, it was thin hair. It was a lot of thin hair. And I could see my receding, like I could see like a little bit of like balding happening on the corners, you know? And then uh, slowly but surely, the hairline went a little further up. And I, I just started noticing, I'm like, yo, this isn't, this isn't right. And I knew it. I knew it. I could see that the hair was getting thinner. It was a Caesar, but it was a thin Caesar. But Alhamdulillah, at that time, I had a great barber who was able to play around with it to make it have life, you know? And if you're someone struggling out there, you're not ready to shave it, okay. But then find a barber who could give it life. And not with like the sprays and the powders and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But like give it life with a good haircut where they can like make, make it like, you know, fade it out in a way that that looks darker on the top and the sides look more faded or whatever. Find a good barber, inshallah. Uh, but people are cutting their hair wrong, right? Like if you want to uh, keep your thinning hair and you're not ready to shave it off yet, okay, bismillah, that's on you. But at least get a good haircut that doesn't expose the thinning hair. And I feel like that's where a lot of people have it. And my number one advice for people with thinning hair is to have a shorter hair. You have to have, with male pattern baldness, it's lighter over here and it's darker over here. On the sides, it's all dark. And subhanAllah, and it's lighter over here. Your goal is to have a light Caesar, but have a fade so that this looks normal into this. Let me give you an example. If you're getting a three, even, right? You got a three. You got a three all around even. No matter how even it is, this is going to look lighter and this is going to look darker. Darker. So when you get the three over here, you got to get a one and a half or a two on the sides so that it can look like the three that's up here. I hope that makes sense. Sisters, I'm sorry if I can't really... Uh, you know, help you out with that, you know? Uh, I know a lot of times when you're wearing the hijab and you wear that little headband and the hijab in the front, it can actually cause thinning of hair too, right? It can, because it's pulling your hair, it's preventing you from getting oxygen, um, and it can weaken your roots. So I, I understand that, you know? 
So wearing that can do that. Maybe find a different solution. I, I genuinely don't know. But I can understand why you feel a certain way about your hair when you take off your hijab. You feel like chunks of it. You're in the shower. You feel chunks of it. You're brushing hair. You feel chunks of it. I get it. You know, I get it. You could feel that way. You know, maybe I get my wife on this so she can uh, explain that perspective. Let me know in the comment section below if that would be helpful for you. Uh, but I can speak mostly from the guy perspective. And the guy perspective is that people are very, very insecure about their hair. And that's why they promote it to men. You know what I mean? Like, they, oh, you look younger. Look at those commercials. You look younger. And women are all over you. I feel like you're hiding behind a hairline. You know what I mean? And this, a lot, like, removing this has allowed me to expose myself to me on how many, like, how much more confidence I need within me. Being bald has made me more confident because I'm able to just be myself. You know, and it's it's removed my insecurity because I'm owning it. I am a baldy. You know, I rock a baldy. I don't have hair. I own that insecurity. A lot of people don't. You know, a lot of people won't even talk about this. But I feel like this is a blessing from Allah because Allah has allowed me to really develop my personality and develop who I am. And it's allowed me not to be reliant on superficial things. And I want to let you know that you're beautiful the way you are. If Allah has decided, listen to what I'm saying. If Allah has decided for your hair follicles to give up and for you to lose your hair, for your hairline to recede and for you to have thinning hair, if Allah has decided it, why are you unhappy? You thought this was going to be an Islamic reminder? You're wrong. If Allah has decided that it is time for you to lose your hair, I'm not saying don't get procedures done. That's between you and Allah. You do you. If you want to spend the money on it, go do that. You don't think I have money? You don't think I have money for that? I do. Allah has blessed me. But Allah has also blessed me with confidence. Oh, but brother, brother, it looks right on you. It looks good on you. you who says that? Alhamdulillah for the mercy and blessings of Allah. It does. But who says that? You think like that's what I wanted? Oh, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, it's a blessing. It's a netma that it does. Oh, brother, but you have a beard and it looks good. Okay, that's fine. But what makes you think I would not want hair? Oh, because it looks like, no, I, I would want hair as much as anyone else. But I've submitted and surrendered to the decree of Allah. If Allah's decree has stated that SQ, I want you to have no hair, then that's what it is. But guess what? In Jannah, I'm going to have a full head of hair, inshallah. Full head of hair. Full head of hair. Because I've submitted to it. Allah, if this is what you want, you don't want me to have hair, Allah, okay? I don't want to have hair either. If Allah, you're happy with that, that's fine. A lot of times people feel like when they have the hair, when their cheeks get less chubby, when their face gets less fat, when the double chin goes away, that's when they're going to love their face more. <clears throat> that's when you're going to love your face more, no. La. You're not going to love your face more then. You're not going to love your face more then. you got to love your face exactly the way it is, however it is right now, and then improve it. Because once you love your face the way it is, that's when you start loving it more and improving it more. Besides that, you're always going to feel insecure about your face. <coughs> it doesn't matter how skinny it gets, how much beard you have, how much hair you have. If you don't love yourself exactly the way you are, you're always going to feel insecure, you're going to feel less, and you're always going to be chasing how to make it better. And no matter how beautiful you make your face through surgeries, through lip fillers, through hair extensions, hair implants, you're never going to feel incomplete. Why? Because you haven't appreciated the face that Allah has already given you. This is something that Allah has given you. Allah has made you perfect the way you are. There's nothing wrong with your hair. There's not, it's not thin. It is exactly the way Allah wants it to be. He is perfect. He only creates perfection. You are perfect the way you are. Accept the way you are. Love the way you are. And if you can make some improvements, make it better. I love the way I am. But if I could lose a few pounds, sure, why not? But I love the way I am. But I could use a few. I could. I could benefit from that. It's all. This body's an amana. I could use uh, benefit from losing a few pounds. My face would go in as a result. It'd be nice. Why not? But I love the way I am already. You gotta love the way you are already. Don't think that you need to have a surgery, a transplant, a lip filler, or something before you start to love yourself, guys. You gotta love yourself exactly the way you are, and that's where it really stems from loving yourself so if you're thinning hair and you've just surrendered to it just shave your damn head let me tell you something do you know how liberated i felt once my head was shaved at first i was scared but then alhamdulillah through allah's mercy i had to go for umrah and naturally i would shave my head for umrah and I told my wife, because I still had a Caesar at that time, and I still had some potential that my barber could play with it for a few more years before I had to surrender and shave my head. 
I told my wife to listen, babe. I'm going to shave my head. Once I shave my head, if you like how it looks, I'm going to rock it like this and just leave cutting my hair and worrying. Because do you know how worried I was? I was looking in the mirror all the time. As a Muslim, as a practicing Muslim, scared, worried. Combing my hair down, this and this, and just making sure my hair, my receding isn't happening, it's not receding. Just combing it down, 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 down. And in my opinion, it made me look older because I was thinning, because my hair was receding on the corners of my temples. It made me look older, feel older. I said, babe, listen, I was so insecure about it, wearing hats all the time, all the time, goofies all the time. I used to think that it's because I wanted to look Muslim, but if I really, really think about it, it was to protect my hairline. May Allah forgive me. But now I wear it because I want to wear it. Now I wear a hat because I want to wear it, but I don't mind not wearing a hat. I don't care, right? I might even go to work without a hat. Who knows? I'm not afraid. Who knows? Anyways. I went to Umrah, I had to remember what I was going to say, but I went to Umrah, I told my wife, that, listen babe, I'm going to wear this, I'm going to shave my head, if you like how it looks, I'm going to just rock it and just keep it that way. Made the Umrah, got my head shaved, <clears throat> first person I sent the pictures to is my wife. She said, babe, I love it. I said, okay babe, alhamdulillah, it's fine. If my wife thinks it's sexy, then it's fine, it's sexy. I love it. But if you're single and you're like, but I don't have a wife, ask you, what am I going to do? You got to think it's sexy. Not your parents, not your friends. You got to think it's sexy. Be like, yo, you know how liberated I felt that I don't have to comb it, look at the corners? Now it is what it is. It's done. Gone. Now I just shave my head in the shower. I do all this by myself. You see this? If you think it looks good, mashallah, leave a thumbs up <laughs> and say hello about it. If you think this looks good, I do it myself. I go to a barber to help and support my mans, a reaver a brother, a talib. I do this all by myself. Maybe I need to make a video about how to groom my beard. You've been asking for it. I might do that. <sighs> it's time for me to go to Jamal, guys. I gotta go. I'm gonna end this video right here, right now. I hope that this helped you. I don't know if I did. But I hope it did help you. You guys have been enjoying these daily videos where I'm real and authentic. I don't know how I'm being real and authentic. authentic. I'm just being myself. Uh, but I hope you benefited from this. I hope this taught you to love yourself the way you are. And just accept yourself and how Allah has made you, you know. And if Allah has chosen a decree for my hair follicles to go away and my hair to fall out, Alhamdulillah, how can I not be happy? I'm pleased with Allah. I'm pleased with my religion. And I'm pleased with the messenger salsam as my messenger. Love you all for the sake of Allah. Stay tuned for that Uyghur social. That we got Uyghur, excuse me. I gotta untrain myself. Uyghur social experiment. Uh, check out some of these other videos right here too. Um, that's all I gotta say. Till next time. I'm out.